Welcome back, Sebastian here. Uh, so today I'm here with my review of the uh, 2023 Berlin, Formula E Berlin e Prix. So honestly, I thought that was a fantastic race. Uh, it was honestly, it was a record breaking race and I'll get into it eventu that eventually. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll start the st at the start of the race. So Blamey was on pole and Bird alongside him. So the commentator said very early on that they were expecting a lot of energy saving and of course, uh, championship leader Pascal Verlein was starting 15th. So starting had a really poor qualifying and was starting near the back. So it was a great opportunity for his main championship rivals to get a lot of points on him today. Uh, so lap one, great start by Van Dorn, but then he kind of gets squeezed in between uh, both Bird and uh, Boemi, backs out of it, uh, and then Tickdom, which allows Tickdom to basically go around the outside of turn one and take the lead from P4 on the grid. Um, Vern drops four positions and Gunther was up to fifth as well. Uh, lap three, Tickdom and Boemi both take attack mode and Bird takes the lead. Uh, lap four, Bird and Gunther take attack mode and Tickdom retakes the lead. So teams, there is basically five to six uh, drivers, I think maybe seven, seven drivers or so, uh, who decide to get rid of their attack modes super early uh, as soon as possible. And then there's another group of like nine or 10 drivers who use them a bit more gradually through the race. So it's really interesting to see that divergence in strategies right from the start. Uh, Tickdom wants to use up all his attack modes and he said this on the radio, as I said. Uh, lap five, Tickdom and Buemi use their second attack modes again, uh, and they drop down to third and fourth respectively. So Bird is in the lead at this point. Uh, Van Dorn down goes, goes down the uh, inside of uh, turn nine for P4 to overtake Gunther. Uh, lap six, uh, Dennis drops to six uh, after taking attack mode. Uh, lap seven, Dennis overtakes Gunther for P5 at turn one, and Verline at this point is still in P14. Uh, lap eight, uh, Mortara was up to eighth. Uh, Jeff went down, uh, down uh, dove down turn six at turn six, but I think he, he held on to the position and there was no uh, big contact there. Uh, Van Doren overtook Wemmy for P3. Uh, lap nine, uh, Bird overtook Tickdom for P1 at turn one. Uh, Van Doren overtook Tickdom for P2 at turn six, so Tickdom gained uh, the energy management problems with the Neo starting to creep in quite early. Uh, there was contact behind between the Maseratis. Uh, so the Ma Maseratis were being very aggressive with each other, racing each other very hard, and that was not the first time, and that was not the last time that was going to be contact between them. Uh, Mortara overtook, overtakes Dennis for P5. Uh, Sergio Senecamo clanks into the back of Gunther. Uh, and tape breaks off his front wing, so he's basically driving around with no front wing, with part of him basically stuck underneath his car. Uh, Bird drops to six, and it looks like he was attempting to take attack mode, and then didn't arm it, so it looked like he went to the first loop, missed it, and then, so he dropped all the way down to six from the lead. Uh, lap 11, uh, Mortara overtakes Tickdom for P2. Uh, so Mortara basically come from quite far back, to, and just flown up the order all the way to P2. Uh, and then again, there was further back, there was contact between Sergio Sani Kamara and Rash. So Rash basically just went a bit too deep in turn one and basically punted him and spun him around, uh, kind of broke off his front wing too. So they're kind of momentarily stuck on track at turn one for a couple seconds there, but they were able to keep going. Uh, Mortara overtakes Van Dorn for P1 uh, at turn nine, uh, extremely close in the top 10. It's like eight seconds covering the top 10. It's all extremely close. Multiple cars were going two to three wide through most through most of the corners, and it was excellent. It was something that you very rarely see in Formula E because normally there's so many corners that you can only go through through one at a time. So it's basically single file, even if it's close. But here there was multiple cars going through many of the corners together. So it was great to see, and it was super exciting. Of course, with that many cars being so close together, it means contacts a lot more likely to happen, though, as we will later find out. Uh, so lap 12, Mortar and Van Dorn take attack mode and Dennis takes P1. Uh, and then right after the safety car is comes out. Uh, and that was basically because there was too much debris on track and they were worried about punctures and that sort of thing. So the safety car comes out uh, and they brought out the for the energy uh, graphic for the first time and it showed that Mortar had 3% less energy than Dennis. So Dennis was in a great spot compared to the rest, field, rest of the field for energy. Uh, lap 14, the safety car comes in. Uh, Van Dorn overtakes Tickdom for P4 at turn six. 
and then Evans over overtakes Tickton for P5 at turn 9, followed by the next lap, lap 16, Bird overtaking Tickton for P6 at turn 1. So Tickton is just getting picked off one by one by the drivers around him. Uh, Dennis takes attack mode and drops to 5th, and Mortara takes the lead again. Uh, Evans overtakes Van Doren for P3, lap 17, Evans uh, gets P2, and Dennis takes P3. And at this point, there were so many cars going through each corner uh, together, like very close together, going wheel to wheel, that it was almost impossible for, for me to keep track of who was taking over who for which position exactly. So I was just trying to keep, keep track of who was in what position and not worry, worry about who was overtaken and at what corner. Uh, so at this point, Brentley was T P4. Uh, Mortara takes attack mode and Evans goes up, moves up to P1. Lap 18, Dennis retakes the lead because Evan takes attack mode. So this is kind of when the second group of cars, the groups, the group that didn't take attack mode right away starts to take attack mode. Um, and then almost doesn't uh, make it, take the lead, want the lead. Yeah, Dennis almost doesn't want the lead. Uh, as soon as he saw that uh, Evans was going to take attack mode, he almost tried to slow down enough that Evans would re stay ahead. But uh, Evans stays ahead. Uh, lap 18, this is kind of when the contact starts to take, starts to take place. Uh, and there's contact between Byrne and Lauder, I think, turn between turns 9 and 10. Uh, Lauder just sends Jeb into a spin, and you can get a 5-second penalty for that later. Uh, I think Rast also got a 5-second penalty for the contact with Sadi Kama as well. Uh, cars going 3 wide into turn 1. The cars are extremely close, following extremely closely. And the main reason for this is because they're fairly low downforce. Uh, the slipstream the effect of the slipstream is extremely powerful. So the car sitting in second uh, gets a massive amount of drag reduction compared to the car in the lead. So therefore they're using less energy. So it's much more efficient to stay in P2 behind P1. And because these cars don't have a lot of downforce, they don't lose as much time in, through the corners. So this kind of strategy would never work in Formula 1 because they have too much, they're too downforce dependent. But in Formula E, they have very little downforce, so they're able to do this and it works very effectively. Uh, lap 19, uh, Van Dorn dropping places, uh, Cassidy takes attack mode, uh, Boemi takes the lead, uh, and then there's also damage for Cassidy at this point, so it looks like he had gotten some body work or something was flying off Cassidy's car. Uh, lap 20, Gunther takes the lead, goes P1, uh, Van Dorn was off, broken suspension, uh, Tickton, Hughes, and Nato were also out. Uh, and they showed on the replay that basically uh, Van Dorn tried to go around the outside of Tickton at turn 3, and he was fairly alongside, so he had the he was uh, he had the right to that space, and Tickton basically just shoved the door on him. Doesn't not sure if he wasn't looking, just didn't care. But he basically squeezes Van Dorn right up against the wall, breaks Van Dorn's suspension, uh, breaks uh, Tickton's car as well. That was definitely Tickton's fault. I would expect him to get a great penalty for the next race uh, tomorrow, the second round two of Berlin, uh, and then in the following uh, kind of mayhem, cars basically go from the left side of the track and sweep across to the right side, and they collect Hughes and Nato in the process. Uh, so then lap 22, uh, Cassie pits, so it looks like he got a puncture, and the safety car comes out right, right after that incident, so the safety car only lasted two laps, which was surprisingly short. Uh, safety car came in the end of lap 22, and Dennis had the most energy at this point. So again, they showed the energy graphic, and still Dennis was in the lead, so it was a really strong position. Uh, lap 23, uh, Evans takes uh, second attack mode, drops to P3, uh, Boemi moves up to P1. Uh, Bird overtakes Motara for P4, and then Veriline is up to P7. So after kind of being stuck uh, out, outside the point paying positions, Veriline was able to move his way up into the points, lower end of the points, by about the midpoint of the race. Uh, lap 24, Gunther overtakes Boemi for P1 at turn 1, so Gunther retakes the lead. Uh, Dennis was P5 uh, temporarily. Uh, and then kind of gets shuffled back down to P6 and is re overtaken by uh, Mortara. Uh, let's see, uh, lap 25, uh, Jaguar 2 3 at this point, and at this point, this was when Lauder's five second penalty was announced. Uh, Mortara takes P4, overtaking Boemi. Uh, Evans is, gets P1 at turn 9, and Bird uh, goes up to P2. Uh, lap 26, Bird, uh, Boemi goes up to P3. Uh, lap 27, uh, Dennis overtakes Mortara for P5 at turn 1. Uh, then Dennis overtakes Gunther for P4 at turn 9. Uh, lap 28, but Boemi overtakes Bird for P2 at turn 6. Uh, Boemi then takes the lead, and the Maseratis almost collide at turn 9. They go extremely wide, causing 
uh, Dennis to basically have to take avoiding action to avoid them. So Dennis ends up falling behind him and causing a lot of frustration, which may or may not boil over, we'll see. Uh, so yeah, basically this caused Dennis to drop down to P7. Uh, lap 30, uh, Burr takes lead into Costa overtakes Gunther for P4. So uh, De Costa was another driver who had a really poor qualifying and he was able to make up, make up his way, make his way up the field uh, pretty nicely. So he's up P4, P5, uh, the midpoints, the midway point of the points paying positions. By this point, the racing was having a really strong race. Uh, let's see. So Dennis then basically, Gunther breaks extre extremely late going into turn six. So the hairpin where the uh, airplane is. And he kind of does a bit of a late move. Then Dennis basically lunges down the inside to try to take the move. Uh, basically breaks way too late, drifts, basically drifts the, into the barrier, drifts the corner into the barrier, uh, clips the front of DaCosta's suspension and breaks his front wing. Uh, they're both able to keep going, but basically they both end up retiring. Um, and on the radio, Dennis was blaming Gunther for basically causing him the break causing that clip that him to lose control of the car and him having to take avoiding action losing control um that being said um the move was late but i don't think it wasn't like he completely closed the door he didn't move but he did still leave space on the inside so i think that at the end of the day dennis still has to keep control of his car and i think i would expect dennis similar to the to take some kind of grid penalty tomorrow probably like three places or so because he did take out uh da costa um Yes, so yeah, Gunther was a bit late, but yeah, as I said, still uh, Dennis's responsibility. Um, then things kind of settled down for a while, nothing really happened, uh, which is one of the few points in the race where there wasn't a lot of action. Uh, Buemi, lap 36, Buemi takes the lead in turn one. Uh, at this point, they said that there was eight different leaders on the race, which is a Formula E record. Uh, and right after they announced that there's three added laps. Uh, uh, Evans, who's in P3 at this point, comes on the radio and asks the team if they're free to race because obviously after uh, Hyderabad, uh, there'd obviously be some kind of, uh, 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 there'd be some concern from the Jaguar uh, team about letting their drivers race. But no, they say he's free, they're free to race. So uh, Evans, following lap, uh, lap 39, Evan goes around the outside of team, team, turn nine for P2 and then takes the lead at turn one the following lap. So really decisive moves there for Evans to take the lead. Uh, lap 41, uh, Jeb overtakes Montara for P7, and then the final lap, lap 43, uh, positions two to four, so uh, Bird, Boemi, and Gunther were very close. Uh, Evans had kind of gone and jumped into the lead and had a couple of seconds gap to the lead, to, to second. Uh, Bird sends around the outside of turn six, takes P2. Uh, Evans takes the checkered flag, uh, there was contact at the final corner between Gunther and Buemi. Uh, Gunther basically goes down the inside. There was a bit of contact, kind of forces Gunther uh, Buemi off. Uh, as of right now, there's nothing yet. He may get a penalty for that. It was a very aggressive move. But as of now, Gunther is P3 and Buemi is P4. Uh, rear line gets, uh, goes, gets across two positions at the line, gets P6. Uh, so as... Another record-breaking stat, there was 23 lead changes. So there was a lead change uh, more than every other lap. So every two laps, there was more than one lead change, basically. And another one, first Jaguar 1-2 finish. So first Jaguar 1-2 finish in history. Uh, Dennis gets fastest lap, but he doesn't get the point for it because he didn't finish. So your final results after the Berlin, uh, from the Berlin e Prix round one. Uh, Evans first, Bird second, Gunther third, Boemi fourth, Cassidy fifth, sixth, Fairline seventh, uh, John Eric Byrne eighth, Lauder. So even with the penalty, Lauder stays in the points. Ninth, Motara. Tenth, Roland. Great for Roland somehow getting points in the tractor. That's in Mohindra. Eleventh, Degrassi. Twelfth, Benistrage. Thirteenth, Nato. Fourteenth, Fines. Fifteenth, Muller. Sixteenth, Sergio Sani Kamar. Seventeenth, Rast. And your retirements were Dennis, DaCosta, Hughes, Van Dorn, and Tictum. Uh, as well as Nato, I guess, because I've forgotten to, somehow forgotten to write down. Oh, no. Nato, Nato finished, yeah. So I guess Nato did finish the race after that collision. And your championship standings uh, for the drivers after uh, round one in Berlin was first, Fairline with 94 points, second, Cassidy, 71 points, third, Jeff with uh, 66 points, fourth, Evans with 64 points, fifth, Dennis with 62 points, sixth, 
uh, bird, bird with 62 points, 7th the cost of 58 points, 8th Boy Me 57 points, Rast 9th 40 points, Hughes 10th with 32 points, Water 11th with 23 points, Van Doren 12th with 22 points, Grassy 13th with 18 points, uh, 14th Gunther with 15 points, 15th Nauta with 11 points, 16th Sergio Sunnycomer with 10 points, uh, 17th Roland with 9 points, 18th Tickton with 9 points, 19th Fenestras with 7 points, 20th Mortara with 5 points, and Muller, Fines, and Van, uh, Valder, Vanderlinder all with 0 points. So that's my review for the Berlin E-Pre Round 1. Uh, extremely chaotic race, very entertaining, very under, uh, unpredictable as well. I thoroughly enjoyed it and I'm very excited to see what uh, tomorrow has in store. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and please subscribe if you want to see more Formula E and Formula 1 content. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow of course for the Formula E uh, Berlin Round 2 and I'll have another video later this week. Uh, my power rankings for Formula E for covering the two Berlin E-Pre's. So thank you so much for watching and goodbye.